Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from the Federal University of Minas Gerais, and today I shall talk a bit about different algorithms that we can use to solve data flow analysis. Most of the material in this class has been taken from the lecture notes of Michael Schwartzbach and also from Chapter 6 of Nielsen's book. The data flow analysis that we had seen before create constraints. We can think of them as a constraint system. A constraint system is a high-level description of a problem. For instance, you can see a set of constraints here on the right side of the figure. They are like a system of equations that produce sets. The results of these constraints are sets. The in and out sets, I mean. We have 12 such sets and we need to find elements for them so that all the equations are true. About these equations, do you know from which analysis they came from? I will leave this question as an exercise, but I will provide an answer very shortly. There are efficient algorithms to solve constraints. The goal of this class is to show you some of these algorithms. So let's use this program here as our running example. The constraints that we saw before will emerge out of it. Because we will be doing data flow analysis, we will have to talk about program points. So let me number the different points of interest in this program. We can organize this program points into a control flow graph. Here we have it, the CFG of our, our example. We will try to run reaching definitions on this program. Do you remember how this analysis is defined? The definition of a variable v at a program point pv reaches another program point p if there is a path from pv to p in the CFG and this path does not cross any different definition of v. Perhaps, as a warm-up, you could try to draw different equations from reaching definitions, and then we try to generate constraints for this program. If you don't remember how these equations were like, here they are. We have equations to define the in and the out sets. Perhaps you want to take a look into them, and use them to get the 12 equations that define reaching definitions for this program. Notice that each program point yields two equations, and we have six program points here. That's why we have 12 equations. Here they are, the 12 equations. These equations, as I mentioned before, form a constraint system. If you solve them, you get a solution for reaching definitions for this program. Let's try to solve these equations. I will rewrite them in Prolog. You will see that we can truly solve them using Prolog. This is the Prolog program that solves those equations. Don't worry about the syntax. You don't have to know Prolog to follow this course. All that I want to show you is that we can indeed use a real programming language to solve the system of constraints. But as an exercise, Perhaps you want to figure out the correspondence between the equations written using the math notation on the right and the equations using prolog on, on the left side of the figure. But note that for each equation on the right side, we have a similar equation on the left, written in prolog. I'm showing the correspondence between the first equation in this figure. And notice that we implement the set operations explicitly in prolog. Here they are, I will show you the code. You can see the union set difference at the bottom of the figure. If you want to run the program, that's simple. I'm using SWI prolog. Once I load the prolog repo, I can issue queries. In this example, I'm asking if the solution with 12 sets is a valid solution to our system. Prolog says that it is. Let's try to figure out what this syntax mean. Basically, we can think of a system of constraints as a system formed by any equations on any variables in this case. So when I write this query called solution, the predicate solution, I'm actually trying to solve the equation in the bottom of the figure. 
In Prolog, variables that start with uppercase letters are open, so that we need to fill them with values. Notice that we can have multiple solutions to the same system of equations. Here, I'm showing you two different solutions. Notice that the second solution with the red force is also valid, but it's more conservative, meaning that it's less tight. It contains more facts in each data flow set. So, what's a conservative solution? It's a solution that is valid, but might not be the most precise. For instance, there is no definition at the program point 4 in this example. Yet, if we add this program point to our solution, we can still get a valid solution, as long as we adapt all the sets accordingly. By valid solution, I mean a solution that solves the equations. Notice that when we are talking about prologue, anything that satisfies the equations will be a solution, even if this anything is not formed by a valid definition point. For instance, I'm inserting the constant a into the solutions, yeah, the letter a. That's not the representation of any program point, but as long as the set satisfies the constraints, that's still a valid solution. However, notice that solutions must be consistent. If I remove the definitions from the outset of point 6, for instance, then I have a wrong solution, and Prolog will give me false for an answer. In other words, the outset of point 6 must contain at least point 6 itself. This point is explicitly included in the outset by the equation that defines that outset. So an empty set for out 6 will be wrong. Another thing that's important to notice is that static analysis approximates the behavior of programs, but they are imprecise. For instance, consider this program on the left. Which definitions reach block 4? Well, once we run this program, is block 4 ever reached by any definition? Think about it. Can any definition of any variable at all arrive at block 4? Or is there any true path in this program from any definition that reaches block 4? The thing is that y in this program will never be less than 0. Yet, our system of equations will never discover that. We can try to use more precise kinds of analysis, but that's not the point. What I want to say is that any static analysis is approximating properties of a program, but knowing, in fact, if these properties will ever be true is an undecidable problem as a consequence of something called Rice's theorem. We will not, talk, we will not be talking about Rice's theorem in this course, but in case you want to know more about it, you can, for instance, check it out on Wikipedia. Nevertheless, if some definition may reach any program point, then the analysis must say it, otherwise we will have a false negative. False negatives are wrong. However, if the static analysis says that a definition reaches a program point, but it never does, then the analysis is just imprecise. This is a false positive. False positives in the context of a May analysis are acceptable. We are failing to find precise information, but we are not saying anything that's false. Reaching definitions is a may analysis. If we say that any definition may reach any program point, that's not wrong. But it's not good for anything. Our analysis is not computing good information. Anyways, we can use that prolog program to find the solutions for our data flow analysis. As an example, Here's a query that does exactly that. If you want, you can stop the video and take a look into this prologue session. Just a last remark. If you decide to play with our example prologue program, some queries might not terminate. If I leave all the variables in the query open, for instance, then the prologue solver will loop. The thing is that prologue uses unification to solve the queries. That's like an exhaustive search, and if we leave all the variables open, Prolog can always add more elements to the sets and still obtain potentially valid solutions. In this case, it will not terminate. It's enough to fix the length of some of those lists 
and then we get a solution. For instance, here, I'm saying that the outset of x5 must have exactly one element. Anyways, in practice, how can we solve these equations? The craft of such algorithm will be the subject of our next classes. Until there, feel free to write me questions or comments. And thank you for watching.